Um, it's always special to welcome back uh, an alum into the uh, teaching ranks of St. Thomas Aquinas. And uh, at first it was only uh, temporary, but things work out as they often do, and it was with great gratitude they were able to bring back uh, Kathy Piro uh, to teach you uh, in the social studies department. So every Tom talk is started with a what drives you statement, and that's pretty much Mr. Holt's fault. <laughs> he broke his car out the first day, and everyone's done it since then. So I figured I should probably show what drives me as well. That drives me. <laughs> Uh, I want you to look at the record here, 12 and 6. 
see if you can get somewhere near that this year. Whoa! At least near there. No. I'm not asking you to you know, get that many wins. Something close to it. Yeah. So, uh, play basketball uh, year round, play ADU as well. Very active, water skiing, wakeboarding, uh, things like that. <clears throat> so, in the summers, this is me. Wakeboarding. I don't think I can still do that now, or if I tried to, it would probably put me in the hospital right after. But I, the point I'm trying to get across is very active, you know, uh, as a late teen young adult. Um, the other day in class, one of my students asked me, Mr. Year, why do you want to be a history teacher? Like, why, or why even a teacher, a history teacher in general? And I was, I was thinking to myself a little bit about that. And it really, it really boils down to my experience with a teacher here who inspired me to, to um, have a love and a passion for history, but not just history, but also the, the profession of being a teacher. Um, and that's Mr. Bell. Mr. Bell was passed away now. He was a teacher here for years. All the faculty know him, um, parents, uh, anyone. It's part of the St. Thomas community is pretty familiar with Mr. Elbo. And I would say he is the perfect mix of sarcasm and compassion. All right, very, very, uh, very funny guy, but a very inviting and warm, warm person. I always look forward to his class every day. Uh, he gave me a nickname that I will never forget to this day, which is Airball. <laughs> yep. Yeah, he would often pass out like quizzes or tests and write your name on it before, but I never said Patrick, it just said Airball. <laughs> that was fun. But he inspired my, my passion in history and, and my initial desire to become a teacher. So I went off to college, got my degree in history. I want to get out of New Hampshire, I've lived here my whole life, and I moved down to West Palm Beach, Florida, and start teaching at Roosevelt Middle School. And uh, things change abruptly within a couple months. So during my third, yeah, during my third month teaching, uh, my first year out of college, completely away from home, you know, don't have, well, my brother was there with me because he was in, um, he was in college at Palm Beach Atlantic. My life changed abruptly, and I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. And I don't know if any of you are familiar with what ulcerative colitis is. Hopefully some of you know what the digestive system is. If not, Mr. Holt, you need to get on that. Okay? But ulcerative colitis is an autoimmune disease that affects the large intestine. Okay? And primarily in the, uh, it's primarily in the, in the sigmoid colon, which is down here. Uh, the descending and the sigmoid colon. And what it is is your immune system thinks something's, something's wrong in your body and it actually attacks itself. So these ulcers, these open sores form in your large intestine. Causes severe abdominal pain, even though spending a lot of time in the bathroom. Uh, it can be difficult to control going to the bathroom, which are not good things for a teacher. <laughs> right? You have a classroom full of kids and you have to go to the bathroom, that can be problematic. Eventually got my own bathroom in my room, which was nice, but who wants to go to the bathroom with 15 uh, eighth graders <laughs> out the door? So I mean, I don't know, I don't know which would benefit that actually was. Um, anyway, so it's it's a chronic condition, it does not go away. You have it for life unless you have your colon removed. Uh, medications that are used to treat it are pretty pretty powerful, uh, immunosuppressants which some are similar to, to chemotherapy type um, drugs or cancer drugs, um, steroids, prednisone, which um, makes you swell up and, I think that I put that picture in, oh no, I didn't put that picture in here. I was going to put it in here, but I decided not to. Okay. I have this picture of my license in Florida when I, 
I was lying on prednisone for about six or seven months. I've shown some of my students, they think it's hilarious. They don't think it's me. Because my face is like this round. Yeah, it's, the side effects from prednisone are almost as bad as the colitis itself. Um, so just the, the drug therapy can be really challenging as far as just managing it, dealing with the side effects and the symptoms. And essentially what happened is, you know, this disease kind of took over my life. You know, I went from playing basketball at the time, working out, water skiing, wakeboarding, to spending two weeks in the hospital, uh, you know, being home for a month and back in the hospital. I've had more colonoscopies than I can count. Okay? And that's not a fun thing to have. You know, most people don't have until they're over 50. I probably had 50 and I'm not even 50. So, um, yeah, it was really, really challenging. Uh, I was missing a bunch of school, and it got to the point where the disease itself really kind of had me versus me having it. You know, I didn't have ulcer colitis, ulcer colitis had me, and it kind of like taken over my life, and it was affecting my social life, relationships, all kinds of things. And it, it got to the point where I had to uh, actually relocate um, back to New Hampshire. I had a house that I bought in Florida, I had to put it up for sale, because just nothing was working, the medications would work for a little bit, then it would stop working, and it was just kind of this vicious cycle of being in school and out of school, and that's not fair to my students, you know, if I'm there for three weeks, and then I'm out for two or three weeks, and things like that. So I wasn't having too much luck with the doctors, and from an emotional standpoint, it was kind of starting to wear me down. You know, there were times that I felt defeated, asking myself, like, why is this happening to me? This isn't fair. You know, and when am I going to get my life back? When am I going to be able to, you know, play basketball whenever I want, or go wakeboarding, or go out with my friends and not have to be like, is there an app for where the closest bathroom is? You know, you can laugh a little bit, it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, but it was just, uh, I was longing for that normal quality of life, or what I felt like my idea of a normal quality of life was. And I kept clinging to the life that I had before, also colitis and wanting that life back. And I think for me, kind of that was the biggest problem is I was, I had this idea of what my life was like, you know, in my late teens, early 20s, I was 23 years old when I was diagnosed. And I just couldn't accept the fact that I'm not gonna like get that back. You know, and that's, and that's kind of like the biggest thing I took away from this, and I'll get into that a little bit more. But in the midst of like all this, you know, frustration and being out of work and, you know, almost being like a little depressed in a way through all of it. You know, I'm back in New Hampshire and I'm seeing doctors in Exeter and they're trying to get under control. No medications are working. And they send me down to Mass General and I have to have emergency surgery to have my colon removed because they had, I had a perforated bottle. The disease was so active for so long that I actually had a hole that formed in my colon. And uh, I say a tragedy or a blessing because after dealing with colitis for about eight years, yeah, eight or nine years, you know, I kind of wanted my colon to be taken out. I didn't know, you know, what the long-term effects of that would be. I didn't know, you know, if I would have a better quality of life than with the colitis or worse. And, but I was kind of to the point where it was scary when it happened because it was an emergency surgery, because I had a perforated bowel, I could have gone and sep I could have had a sepsis and died within 24 to 48 hours if it wasn't removed right away. Um, but I was talking to my doctor after, she said because of how diseased my colon was for so long, it was as thin as a piece of paper when she removed it. So, first surgery, two more surgeries, and then this was really challenging as well. I had uh, three surgeries in six months, they were all open surgeries. I got a nice little scar right here, but I don't have a colostomy bag, thank God. Yeah. Uh, I had it temporarily, it was, it was not fun for all kinds of, all kinds of reasons. Um, but, like, looking back on all this, 
the, the disease itself was really challenging. The, the colon re being removed and all the surgeries and dealing with that was really, really difficult to get through as well. But coming out of all of that, you know, I realized it can be so easy to dwell on the negative and to like wallow in, in self-pity and have this woe is me attitude or woe is me demeanor. And I, I realized that ultimately like however bad my day was going, there's people out here that are having a worse day. There's people that are struggling, there are people that you know, don't have food on the table, you know, that are um, dying from cancer or you know, some other affliction. There's people that live in parts of this world that suffer in ways we couldn't even fathom. You know, so why am I, I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's proper to acknowledge the struggles and things that I went through, but instead of focusing on, on the negativity and, and the struggles I'm going through, I tried to transition to focusing on what I, what I do have and the blessings that I have, you know. And, you know, if I didn't have my family to support me through all this, I don't know how I would have gotten through it, you know. I moved back here, I, I didn't have a job, I was not teaching for a couple of years, trying to recover from all the surgeries, and even before the surgery, just dealing with the class itself. Um, so it was, it was just, the whole thing was a, a huge learning experience. And um, I try to focus on the, the even today. Like I have days where it's you know I'm missing a third of my digestive system, so it can be challenging from day to day. You know, dealing dealing with that. I go to the bathroom a little bit more than the average person, that's for sure. Um, but I try not to dwell on you know, the, the challenges that I have, because I can't change them at this point. This is, these are the cards that I was dealt. This is the body that God gave me, so I have to, to make the best of it. And I try to focus on, on the blessings and, and the good things that are going on. Like being able to come back, you know, to my alma mater and teach here. Like this has been an amazing blessing. You know, working with the students that I have, the teachers that some taught me, that I still can't call them by their first name. And yeah, uh, a couple weeks ago, I emailed Mr. Holtz and I like, addressed him Mr. Holtz. And he was nervous. He's like, my dad says Mr. Holtz. I thought I was in trouble. But I can't call him the R word. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do Mr. Collins and Mrs. Collins. I can't. It's just, it's weird to me anyway. You know, teachers that I didn't have, you know, as a, as a student, that's fine. It's just, I don't know. I can't do it. I can't do it. Uh, and, and then just, yeah, like I guess my family being here, supporting through all this. My nieces are up from uh, Texas. I only see them twice a year. <laughs> so just focusing on the, uh, the good, the positive, and the things that I have to look forward to, and not dwelling on the things that happened in the past.